Okay. Here we go. Thanks for checking this video out today, guys. I'm gonna start again already. I already messed up. <sighs> All right, here we go. Thanks for checking this video out today, guys. I'm sorry for not posting as much as I uh, would like to. I, I've had some technical difficulties recently. I, I lost my machine, so we've got a new rig behind me. Um, moral of the story is back up your files. I was very irresponsible and almost lost all of my work for the last several years. So that's photography projects, illustration, design, even family photos. I almost lost everything. So let this be a lesson to you. It's always important to keep a backup of your work because you never know when your machine is just going to bite the bullet. Storage is cheap these days. It really doesn't cost anything to have a redundant backup copy of your stuff. So like I said, learn a lesson from me and back up your files. Without wasting any more time, we're gonna get right into today, today's video. I'm gonna show you this um, abstract vector background technique that I, I've used on a few projects. It's quite simple. It's kind of got a retro vibe to it. We'll be able to put it together in a few minutes. So come follow along in Illustrator with me and hopefully uh, you guys will find this neat and find it useful. If you clicked on the thumbnail, I'm assuming that you like the look. So let's go figure out how to put it together and you'll be able to use it in your projects in no time at all. Okay, here we are in Illustrator. And the first step to create this effect is to make a blob. Uh, for me, I'm gonna achieve that using the pencil tool. The keyboard command for that is actually N on the keyboard. And I'm gonna use a mouse. You're free to use a tablet or a pen tool, whatever you feel comfortable with. But for this example, I'm gonna use the pencil tool. And I'm gonna create a random blob few different waves to it like this and that's our that's our first step uh, this path isn't super clean so what I'm gonna do to just smooth the whole thing out and make the blend look better is I'm gonna go object path simplify and I'm gonna set the curve precision all the way down to zero and that will just clean up everything here and it takes us from 27 points in the original path down to 13 and this first shape I'm going to make cyan and the next shape I'm going to make magenta. They, they, they make a good combination. So I'm going to use the pencil tool again and starting here in this empty void I'm going to create my second shape and we're going to come back through and we're going to intersect with the original path a few times and maybe we'll come over here like that. So I end it short on that side. Now, the same thing's happened here. There's a few things that don't look um, very smooth. So we'll grab this shape again and go Object, Path, Simplify. And again, it cleans it up. It takes it from 29 points down to 11 points. So it just smooths everything out. Now, this is the one that we're going to make magenta. And this will be the basis for our blend. You can play around with the positioning of this to find a spot that you like before you blend the two elements together. So if you go into your blend settings first, I think by default this comes up as smooth color. For this effect we want to be specified steps and I found that eight is a good looking number. If you have more steps, you'll get more lines that are created by Illustrator automatically and it starts to get a little bit busy fewer and the effect is not as cool. So eight was a good balance for me, but you can experiment with that. And I'm gonna select both of these shapes and go back to object, blend, and this time we'll make the blend. And just like that, the effect uh, is looking pretty good. Every once in a while, you'll get these sorts of things where the blend is a little bit glitchy looking and you can find the original path and play around with them until you can clean up areas like that. There it is, that's smoothed out a lot more. The nice thing about this is that everything is live. 
so you can play around with it until you're happy until you find a spot that you like it and then once you're ready for your final output you can go object expand and it will create individual lines instead of um, just having the live blend it's now fully expanded like that obviously the strokes are all still live so you would have to expand it a step further to get fills if you needed and there you go the other neat thing that you can achieve with this effect is we had blended one shape to another shape that had one color blending to another color but you could even modify the stroke to include something like a dashed line so then it blends from a solid line to the dashed line and it creates a neat sort of technical effect it might be nice for a dj flyer you're kind of representing sound in a way anyway nice simple effect easy to achieve hopefully uh, you found this useful and you'll be able to apply it somehow to a project that you're working on okay so that was it just like i promised a nice simple technique hopefully it was nice and easy to follow along with and hopefully you found it useful if you stuck around to this point you probably did so It'd be great if you could give the video a thumbs up and if you want to see more from me, subscribe um, and you'll get a notification then when I upload something new. Anyway guys, back up your files. Storage is cheap. Don't get caught like I did. It's a real scare. Don't want anyone else to go through that. Have a good one guys. Peace.